With our, with our, our teams across the globe have uh, the way that we've been instituting Facebook. In the U.S., we have one for General Motors, but then we have one for each of the brands, Chevrolet, Cadillac, Buick, GMC. And most of the countries that we operate, um, much like Holden is, you know, Holden is the brand. It's the brand that you buy from. So a lot of our teams, like in the Middle East, have Chevrolet Arabia or Chevrolet India. Um, because you don't relate necessarily to the company, you relate to the brand that you buy. So a lot of our teams have done great work with interacting with uh, the World Cup, which was a huge internet phenomenon as well as social, um, by having uh, games and that you could do, um, the, the Chevrolet Arabia team, for instance, did a fantastic job creating an application where it was a bracket system, so you would get points based on how accurate your team choices were for the World Cup. Um, and, and then also created that conversation around uh, Chevrolet in a very creative and innovative way that wasn't you know, wholly brand focused, but it was great. And another thing can be as simple as asking people to go on the Facebook page and share photos, and then the person who gets the most likes on their photos within that page or community is then invited to experience the brand. So we'll do a tweet up in their area and pay for it or we'll say the, per the five people with the most likes on their page gets to come to a media event. You know, we, we schedule these events where we'll enable journalists to drive a car to fully experience everything that that car means. Why not also open that up to consumers who may or may not be interested in the brand and learn from them? So I think the photo opportunity where we've had people like the photo and then come to a media event, um, you know, from a business perspective, it may not add additional costs. You know, we already have the event planned, but from a social perspective, the amount of value that we get from that and interacting with people is, is fantastic. So there's a lot of different social strategies that you can do. The other one that's been very successful successful for us, wow, that, that could be a typo now, wouldn't it? Um, so that has been very successful for us is by instituting a community manager. Um, someone who goes on the page by their name, her name is Deb, if you go on the GM page for the US sites, um, so it's Facebook backslash General Motors. And Deb does a fantastic job. One of the things that we did around Father's Day was we asked people to post memories of their dad and a car. And a lot of people would post their stories about their dad in, in a General Motors vehicle. And then the next day we turned around and did a video set to music that was a minute 30 um, to help thank the community for sharing their stories. Um, you know, another very popular way to make people feel as if they matter on the page. So we can do it face-to-face -face or we can do it online. But again, it's all about understanding the community and, and what they respond to. And so it's from Holden's point of view, um, what we've really done is spend a lot of time listening to what the, the community is actually looking for from Holden, from, and particularly from our Facebook page. Um, and I would say that a large proportion of the people that are, are fans of, um, of the Holden page, or at least the ones that are really vocal, um, are our Holden heartland. So what they told us is that they want to celebrate our heritage, they want to celebrate our historic products, particularly Toronto, Monaro, um, anything with a big Chevy um, engine in it. Um, and so we, we responded to that. So what we instigated was Flashback Friday, um, and that's had a phenomenal response. So every Friday, We'll put some historic video on, we'll put some, um, some pictures on, um, and the response that we get when we, when we put our content up is absolutely fantastic. You know, people really appreciate that we're, we're diving into the vaults to celebrate our heritage with them, and we're not just talking about you know, the current product that's on sale today. So on, on a Friday, if I see hashtag FF, it's not follow Friday anymore, but it's flashback Friday. <laughs> I actually like, uh, they're all really great examples of, you know, interacting and I, I like the Father's Day one, I think that's, that's, that's very cool. Um, now, obviously you two ladies are involved heavily, but you're not the only ones, you have teams with you. I'd just uh, like to get a uh, bit of an indication how many people are working in the social media team in your respective uh, companies. And, uh, and you personally, what percentage of your time, because you have other roles, what percentage of your time on average per week would be devoted uh, to the social media channels? Uh, speaking from my experience, um, being on the social media team, when I was on the proper social media team, there were four of us, and our role was global. Um, so there's no way that four people can be responsible for that volume of conversation, so we do a lot of internal training. 
So we have a core social media team that helps make the decisions as to what we're going to do with this, um, with the Facebook page or content strategies. But we encourage as many employees to be active and vocal in their social networks as possible. Um, in many of the countries that I go to, most of the time I'm working with a team where we don't have the luxury of having a full-time social media person. Um, it's, it's a percentage of their job. So what we do is we'll have someone from communications, someone from uh, the customer relationship management team, and someone from marketing who constitutes this core club. What I recommend now, you know, I've been training for like eight months, but I do have another job and it's in finance and corporate communications, which does not include social media in my title. So I do know that you have to balance, right? And from day to day, I rely on my BlackBerry to keep me up to date. And when I'm walking to meetings, that's when I check Twitter on my BlackBerry. That's when I check Facebook on my BlackBerry as I'm running into walls. Um, so it is a balance that you have to learn, but I would say about 33% of my time day to day, I check at nine at noon and at four, blocked in my calendar, I have about 15 minutes a day that I have dedicated time to make sure that I'm up to date in the community. Um, so you do, you do have to almost schedule that commitment to make sure that you engage, um, but the more people you have in your organization that are trained and understand why we're in social and how to do it effectively, it definitely helps. I think Andrew can speak to Walden. Okay, so we've had a, um, a relatively small cross-functional team working um, on social media for the for the past uh, for the past year. Um, and one of the things that Annalise is over here helping us with this week um, is getting the communications team you know, up to speed with Twitter, what you know, up to speed with how we use Facebook. We've done a lot of work on our media site um, to, to make that more um, more friendly and, and, and uh, putting putting more video and more interactive content up there. Um, and so, you know, it will um, extend to be a part of everybody's role um, across the corporate uh, corporate affairs team, and that's really that's really exciting. So, if you go onto my uh, my um, Twitter address, Andrea Matthews, there's a, there's a list there, Holden and GM Tweaks, and there's a whole bunch of Holden people on there. And I would really encourage you to to send them some app messages and, uh, and and get them tweeting. That would be great. <laughs> we'll just stop for a minute while you do that. <laughs> Um, now, monitoring. I mean, the social web is this hyper-connected beast that's never-ending and it's 24-7. Uh, Annalisa, how do you guys handle that, um, you know, and always on um, ch multiple channels that are just people talking all the yeah. time? H how do you guys monitor and you like, obviously have a process in place, but can you walk us through a bit on how the monitoring is handled uh, from, from your office? Yeah. Um Happy to do so, and for those of you social media heads in the uh, in the room with us, the million dollar question is who can figure out ROI? No one's done it yet. Um, and I think when we ask our marketing teams and if we're sitting in a meeting with our managing directors who don't quite get social yet, the first question they ask us is how does this sell cars or how can you prove that this really works? Well, in the discussion we were having today, we all came up with this epiphany that our traditional marketing and PR you know, counterparts who have been selling us our monitoring have basically figured out a way to make an algorithm that makes it sound like if you get a certain amount of views, it equals a certain amount of purchases. Us in social media, maybe we have more ethics. <laughs> I don't know how it works. But if you can figure out how to do effective monitoring, that is the, the question of the decade. The way that we do it um, in the U.S., and it's different per country, um, based on the type of monitoring tools that you have and type of languages that are spoken, we have not found one monitoring service that enables us to search multiple language with enough efficiency to be a valid response. Um, Facebook, as you guys know, is mostly done manually, so we enable a lot of people to help us monitor our Facebook page. Um, with Twitter, it's a little easier because at least we have third-party applications, I mean even free, which are fantastic, um, that help us enable whether or not we're being effective with our reach, what our tone is like, but ideally what we want to understand is, 